In this video, we are going to go over how to download, install, and your basic setup of the HP Tuner software. First thing you want to do is go to HP Tuners website, hptuners.com, go to the download section. We download the latest stable version. Um, the beta is used if you, um, sometimes if you have the latest cars, latest, uh, let's say you got an update that you're needing done on, a, on like a 2021 vehicle or something of that nature, you'll want to use the latest beta version to do that. Once you've downloaded the software, it, you can browse out to your Windows Explorer or you can click on the link here. Go to Downloads, VCM Suite 2, it looks like this. Just double click on it. It'll bring up the installer package. You just go through all the steps, accept the terms, your default folder, install, and it'll go through its installing package. Just click yes. Finish button, it finishes it up. Go down on Windows 10, you'll go down to the start menu. Scroll down to where you see the HP Tuners folder. Right click on editor. I like to send to the desktop or pin to taskbar. Either or. I'm going to pin to the start menu. You can put it over here. I'll pin them to the taskbar. That puts them down here on the bottom of your taskbar. You can also go to the file location. If you go here, open file location, and then there's your shortcuts. So I like to drop the shortcuts onto the desktop. I like to drop the shortcuts onto the desktop here so they're easy to, to get to later. So just double click on your VCM editor. This will bring up the application. This is for writing your files. Um, it comes with some sample files. This first folder is your open file. So you can come in here, here's some samples. Let's just pull like a 2002 Chevy Camaro file. That opens up the file so you can start to see all the parameters. Um, you different tabs, you got engine, engine, diag. This is where you'll check for your codes. Obviously your transmission, transmission diag fuel system allows you to go in and set your gauge, your sending units and such. If you go to edit, this is where you can see your calibration details here. This tells you what the, the PCM is, what model, the VIN number of the vehicle. This is your controller, so your operating systems, you can drag the drop here. You can also tuner lock it here. You can change it to lock it. If you double click it, you can make it to apply a tuner lock. I don't run tuner locks anymore. I did in the past. We no longer do that. You can view your change history logs here. This is where if you've made changes, it'll show up over each one here on the tab. And then if you go to your gear and tire wizard, this is where you put your tire size. If you want a 26 inch tall tire and you put a 373 gear, you hit adjust and this will actually update your transmission tables. So when you come back up to your view, change history, now you can see that all the transmission tables were updated and reflect the changes to the new speedo and the gear. So if you go to your shift speed, you'd see that since these are based off of speed, it, it, it would now have to be updated due to the gear and tire size. Um, this is where they're going to, you know, shift. Um, it also changes your output revolution, which affects your, your driving, uh, sorry, your speedometer. Um, and then your pulses per distance, same, same deal. Um, most people, a lot of people want to change their fan settings. So you go in your fans are here. You can change the temperature in which they come on the, in this particular file, um, things of that nature. I go in a lot of times the tools, you got options here. This is if you want it to be able to lock all your files, you want to load the last two on startup. If you're in parallel or in metric, most people you know, the standard is going to be Imperial around here. 
um, in some areas it'll obviously be metric your views tab here you got your basic and your advanced it basically cuts down your parameters and how many you can see i always run advanced so you can see all the tabs that are available um, makes it easy to to get to where you want to your info button here this is where you can get if you have your i don't have my hp tuners box my mpvi2 hooked up but if you had the interface this would tell you your codes or sorry not your codes your keys what keys you have available what you've licensed what vehicles are licensed they'll all show up here um i'll go into this more in detail in a tuning file uh, basically we're going to go over how to tune you know the basics of tuning and we'll get to that in a later date for now we're going to move on to the scanner um kind of show you where your what the, some of the options are in the scanner so this is your VCM scanner here. This is what you would hook up to the computer in your vehicle to monitor the parameters. So if you wanted to see what the vehicle is doing, here's a cruise log. So we'll pull up the sample log file they have here. You just simply hit open and then it's usually in documents, logs and tunes. In this case, it's in samples, but people create their own folders. You can create a new folder here and call it, you know, Camaro. And then this is where you might save your scans as you as you scan your own personal vehicle. In this case, we'll pull up the Silverado log file. So that's how you open your file. Your layout is going to be how this this whole desktop looks. So your recent layouts is something you normally lose. You save your layout after you get it. So if you add channels, if you change your gauge layout, you can go in here and change your gauge layout by right clicking on it. You can change what you want the gauges to look like, how fast the speedometer goes, the, your pounds per minute in your MAF, your max RPM that you want to see. We could like, for example, we'll come in here and change to 7,500 RPM. You notice this clicks here to the um, zero is the, is the uh, minimum, 7,500 is the max. You can make it, you can have the factor of zero so it shows the real numbers. You can have the factor of 10 so you can see then if you want decimals or how many count distances, that shows your, your point zero zero here. Um, you can change it to a bar. You can change it to elliptic. So there's lots of options here. This is kind of what you want to see, um, what works best for you and how you like to look at it. These numbers here change your range. So that's your red, your yellow. Um, you can change your tick counts to make it more even. So if you only want to see eight, eight ticks, you can have this or six. They make it uh, a little easier to see. If you want a factor of 100, then you can have it like that. So a lot of people do times a thousand, so you that'll give you that 8K range here, and then put more ticks in it. That gives you that extra. So those endless to play with. Let's say you wanted to. This is your different parameters you're watching. If you decide that you want to add a gauge, for example, you can add a round gauge. Right up here, you would pick your parameter that you're looking to add. Let's say that we wanted to add uh, oil pressure, for example. You just double click on oil pressure. And you, it's going to pop up and say, hey, this is what parameter that we suggest, or you know what you're doing, and you can collect it. We, I, a lot of times, the best option is to let them pick it. You put your counts at 10, your max is 100, your factors at one so that way it shows all the way up it'll break it down evenly minor ticks we can do five arc start zero arc sweep 100 so you can start it here at 270 we can start 90 bring it all the way to 360 and zero to 360 is how we'll set this one up you do a factor of 10, it's a little easier to read. You can change the side, you can change the placement of the gauge. This is the placement location. You can change it here if you want it to be. Put it all the way to the left, so you can put it into the left. That moves it to the left side of the screen, the right side. Same thing with your up and down and your width and your size. Um, if you want it to have a, a, a a range that you want the warning to come on you can set this at let's say 10 you know 20 pounds we got an order and it ends at 10. And that gives you your your indicator here your yellow indicator so there's a couple ways you can add gauges i i'm personally run the default gauges 
Um, I'm not a fan, so if I want to delete this gauge, I just remove it off like that. I run the default gauges. They have all I want to do. I use the chart versus time more than I use anything. I will go into the chart layout here. We'll use, you can change your, add your channels, see what you're wanting to see. So we have RPM, speed, engine duty. Um, if you want to add another channel to this, you hit the plus sign here for a series. Once again, you add your parameter. We're looking at, let's say, we want to see the idle air control. And we would put uh, idle air control position here and there. Units, it's counts, max is 10. You don't need a reference line. You can change the color to whatever color you pick that you choose. Just close. And now your I cat it in it. The only thing you can add on the charts time has to be in your channels over here. So see how we don't have a channel with it? In this particular log, that was not logged in that ch channel was not logged during the, the pull as they were driving it. So you can't add it to the chart and get any live data. Now let's take that we go over here and we take intake air temperature. I'm gonna replace the IAC channel with intake air temperature. So we'll go in here and grab it. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do 300 degrees, minimum zero. We'll do a blue line. We save. Now it populates. So because it's a channel that was logged during the pull, it's something that can be populated in the uh, chart versus time. The chart versus time is, I, I like to use it to reference. You can look at things for problems right off the bat. You can, things that stand out. So it's a quick reference. Um, and then if you want to see, a lot of people are used to using like the volumetric efficiency table, the VE table. It's uh, used in a lot of software. So the graphing tables over here will address that. You can see your spark based off your table or your fuel trims based off of what your, your VE table would look like. So let's say if we go back to our editor here on our shortcut and we go to our VCM editor and we open a Silverado file. I believe they have one. Yes, here we go. And you look at your, this is a later model one. So we'll use the Camaro for reference. You look at your Camaro file, they have a primary VE. You notice this looks very similar to your graph. Your graph, what that does over here is your graph allows you to basically mimic this side. You can put the same numbers in both sides here and be able to see what, uh, let's pull this up. Basically to see exactly where it affects your graph. So where that's useful is right. If you left click in this corner, right in this corner selects all when you hit copy, this is your correction. In fact, this is how much the computer is pulling on fueling. You can then come over to your fuel table here, paste special, multiply by percentage. And we've now pulled out in just those areas we've hit the amount of fuel that we had overfueled in this case. So very helpful later. And that's something we'll get into with the actual tuning um, later. But in this particular case, I'm just kind of showing you where the, the histogram, where the graphs show up and, and work well. Same thing, if you go to your graphs layouts, you can then add channels. There's a lot of preset ones in the VCM scanner and some of the layouts. I have a whole folder that I will, I will show in our later videos that has different samples in it. They don't, they, uh, they don't send you a whole lot of, of graphs in the beginning. I don't believe, no, there's not much in the, in the default setting. We'll come in here and create them a lot of times. So if we want to add a graph, add a table, let's say we want it to be, uh, air fuel, you know, we're going to call it, uh, so in this case, we're going to do manifold pressure. And let's say we wanted to do a, you know, based off of a, uh, a wide band. And we wanted to get our fueling set up so we could uh, use the correction instead of using the long-term fuel trims, we would use the wideband variance so we can set up one like this. Um, so your column axis a lot of times here will be your intake manifold. No, I don't want that. I actually want engine speed for our column axis. Engine RPM. Sounds good. And this is going to be our manifold, intake manifold.
And then so what I like to do is I like to copy our use your your channels over here, your column accesses. You you've got to define these numbers. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and then tune file that we're using. The, the vehicle that I'm working on, I'll come over here, for example, this Camaro will pull our column axis. So if I right click on this column axis, you can actually copy labels. And so if we do that, then we can paste those here. Just hit control V. That allows you to paste them. If I come back over here, right click, row axis, copy labels, control V. And that should uh, populate our, our table. So now when we come out here to map, you see we've got our columns set up and we've got our, our uh, RPM set up and it actually matches the, uh, the file that we're using as our base. So we'll change this to AFR, let's say. And then our parameter that we're going to use is going to be our wideband. So usually on your widebands, they're going to be set up as a, a uh, external sensor. So let's say that you had set up a wideband. Um, and we'll get to that later. But you go in here and, you're at, and you got an AEM wideband set up. You can use this AEM wideband. If, it had, if they had used it as an, a, a channel, then it would populate these cells similar to the long-term field trims. And then you could actually, rather than use your long-term field trims, you could actually use your AFR and the error on the AFR to, you know, update your VE table in the tune file. So that's the basics on how to set this up um, in terms of what each graph does. We'll get into more detail in another video showing you how to basically do it for each file that you're working on. But this kind of gives you a rough rundown. Um, once again, the help menu here, resync interface, you can pull and it'll check your files um, and your keys and to make sure you have a license, um, you'll input those there. Tools is similar to before, the options, imperial metrics, same thing as the, you've got a calculator, you got unit conversion. So let's say you, you were working and so you're used to seeing PSI, you can convert it to KPA. So 10 pounds is 68 KPA. Um, same thing with, you know, temperature for 200 degrees, it's 93, you know, so. Um, it's useful calculators built in there for that. Um, math parameters, this will be where you do some user math. You can set up some channels. Let's say you wanted to do fuel efficiency or if you wanted to do calculated horsepower based off of fuel usage. These are all channels. You can create those. And then these are things that you can actually, you know, bring in and, and look at later and watch. Um, I've even put math channels up here and watched them to do, you know, estimated horsepower, for example. We do that a lot in the in the fifth, you know, Gen, Gen 5 ECU. So. These, this will come into play later, once again, in a later video. So if you want to add your chart to time, you want to add your graph gauge, these are all, all those things are here. You save the layouts, obviously it's self-explanatory. Once you get one the way you like it, you save it out. And it could be, let's say your, your uh, Camaros or, you know, your third gen Camaros. And let's say you want a fourth gen, um, or sorry, fourth gen Camaros. And let's say you have a fifth gen and they've got a different ECU. Well, then you'd want to have a different layout. So. Um, we'll, we'll get into that in a later video, but for mine, this will at least help you get the software set up and you can kind of play around in the log files, click on them, see what it does. Don't be afraid to try anything in the log files, you know, in the sample files, because, you know, you, you can't hurt anything in the sample files. So you can change and see what it does and get used to it. Uh, stay tuned for another video and we'll go over in deep, a, a more depth, what we need to do to basically start a file and how you would go about tuning from start to finish. Um, on a basic engine combo and then we'll get into more after that thank you uh, be sure to like and subscribe below thank you